Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to our very special presentation with Kate Celeste. So we're going to talk about uh, holistic nursing today and self care and practice. Um, but before we get going, my name is Nicole Ryle. And I'm the Director of Development and Public Programs here at CIHS. Uh, and we have just kind of re-envisioned our public programs and uh, renamed it CIHS Enlighten. And the goal of CIHS Enlighten is to offer public programs such as this one, offer inspiring speakers such as Kate. Um, also, we are doing uh, certificate programs and continuing education. So um, if you ever have any ideas or suggestions for programming, we are always open um, to hearing what you'd like to see more of. Um, but for today's presentation, um, Kate, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about Kate. Kate Celeste has been on her holistic journey as a practicing nurse since 1986. She is currently the president of the Canadian Holistic Nurses Associ Association and is a known speaker and present presenter on integration of holistic theory into nursing practice and mind-body-spirit approaches to self-care. She is also one of our CIHS graduates with a master's degree in integral health and an author of a book called Beyond Bones, a conscious reflection on paradigms of health and disease. With decades of experience in healthcare and her client-centered focus, Kate keeps, helps her clients find the tools to empower them on their journey. Her West Coast private practice supports clients to integrate holistic modalities into their healthcare regimes. With a strong interest in biofield science, her intention is to introduce nurses and other healthcare professionals to individualized holistic self-care practices through her baby, right? her new program, the Conscious Nurse Project. And she's going to be talking a lot about that today. So without further ado, Kate, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Nicole. Yes. <laughs> and just welcome to everybody who took the time to be here today as well. I, I hope this is informational for you. And as I mentioned to Nicole, if any questions come up or you want to have some sort of a conversation within the content of the presentation, please feel free. So I guess I'm just going to start off with... Um, how did I become a holistic nurse? And as Nicole mentioned, I started my career in the mid 80s as a registered nurse, and I worked for many years in different areas of healthcare. Um, I guess I should say also that I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, so I'm a Canadian based um, RN. Um, I worked until 2013, and at that point, I was a long-term care case manager for uh, one of our community health authorities. Um, at that point, you know, our system was really falling apart. It was becoming very difficult for us to reach our standards of practice. Um, we were basically raging against the machine, if you want to look at it that way. And I think that's, you know, fairly typical, whether you're working in the States or working in Canada. Things have changed. Uh, resources are becoming more thin. Um, so at that point, I really had to get out of there. Unfortunately, I had to leave. I was physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. And I also took a lot of guilt with me, or I had a lot of guilt for leaving my colleagues behind. So when I left, uh, I literally had to go into a process of healing and recovering from um, the experience that I'd had. So, you know, I typically would have, would have turned to, you know, my physician at that time. I wasn't really aware of holistic practices and, you know, I think the best thing that happened to me at that point was that my daughter said to me, mom, you got to go to yoga. And she was an instructor at that time. And she connected me with a really great yoga studio in town here. Um, so I went and it took a lot for me to commit to that. But when I did, I really found that it reached me in a way for healing that was different from what I had experienced in the past. Um, so I committed to doing that. I was going four days a week for literally the whole year. 
And I not started to notice that my blood pressure was starting to go down. I noticed that I was calmer. I was not as stressed. Um, my mind was not as busy. I was able to become more mindful. Um, along with that, though, I did still uh, have the support of my family physician. Um, I also was doing more work outside. I was able to go for walks. I worked in the garden. So that was, a, that was you know, unbeknownst to me at the time, a very holistic and integral approach to recovering and healing. Around that time as well, I discovered a program through one of the colleges here in Vancouver, the Advanced Integrative Energy Healing Program. And I received my certification in that in 2015, and I opened my own independent practice, um, providing integrative energy healing and also integral coaching, which I pursued a certification in that as well. Um, for me, in British Columbia, AIH is considered within my scope of practice as a registered nurse. So I am regulated to doing that and providing holistic um, holistic treatments and holistic support to my clients. Um, so beyond that, I also connected with the Canadian Holistic Nurses Association, which even broadened my perspective further as far as holistic nursing practice goes and connected with other nurses who were on the same journey. Um, my MAIH from CIHS absolutely um, supported what it was that I'm doing and what I'm doing now, because I learned so much more about consciousness-based, subtle energy-based practices that um, just expanded my perspective and really supported positive, positive outcomes for my clients. So, you know, not everybody has the same story or the same opportunity for that type of training, but that is that was my journey. And that is why I can call myself a holistic nurse, a holistic informed nurse, but also a practicing holistic nurse. So why is this an important topic? So nurses are asking about holistic practices as an alternative to the allopathic. Um, the CHNA's membership has doubled in the past year. And we receive emails weekly from nurses asking how they can become holistic nurses or holistically informed nurses, um, not necessarily to leave their practice in hospitals or clinics or wherever they're working, but to help them to broaden their perspectives, but also to grow um, as individuals and learn more about body, mind, spirit, um, resources and supports. Uh, current healthcare systems are failing. We know that. We're in them. We're experiencing them as clients, as professionals. Um, there's an increase in the acuity of the people that we see, and there's just no time, or it doesn't seem to be any presence of um, treating, you know, the broad spectrum of our clients, the, the holistic perspective. Um, we just, you know, put a Band-Aid on it and, and hope for the best. Um, holistic approaches attend to the whole person physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And spirituality doesn't necessarily have to mean uh, formal religion, but absolutely that's fine. Um, but anything that feeds your soul, anything, you know, that, that gives you purpose and meaning, um, you know, how do you get through, how do you get through difficult times? What, you know, helps you to be a grounded person? Um, we need to look at those things a little bit more as healthcare providers. Um, acknowledgement of transpersonal energetic consciousness based aspects of health broadens our view and provides more tools to support wellness. That's part of the conversation. And the public is also looking for alternatives and complementary modalities to support wellness. So when I say holistic practices, I also include integral practices. So we're not just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. If somebody needs a medication, that's okay. We can just look at other, um, other treatments or modalities or practices that can help to support them even more so. So holistic nursing practice, what, what does it look like? What is it? It's, it's actually really a way of being. Um, you can't really provide holistic services to someone if you haven't embodied a holistic perspective yourself. So it really is a journey. 
And it includes very typically a healing journey. You know, I'd say the majority of the, the nurses that contact us or that I've spoken to have gone through some sort of a crisis, some sort of a burnout, um, and they've, they've recovered and worked really hard. And, and a lot of them have had these experiences of body, mind, and spirit supports that have helped to, you know, reintegrate them into a, a stronger, uh, maybe more resilient um, person, individual, and healed person. Um, that's an ongoing thing. That's not something that just snap happens. You know, it's something you have to work at and it's something that changes, you know, over time, you know, as you go through different experiences, if you have a broader holistic perspective, you may be able to have more tools to help you when things get difficult, um, to help you with any roadblocks that come up and to actually, you know, work really, really effectively with your, your clients and your patients. So there are many nurses who have moved into independent practice as holistic nurses. Um, there are energy healers. There are people who use therapeutic touch, bone therapy, holistic nurse coaching is a big thing right now. You don't have to leave the hospital job though to be a holistically informed nurse. You can, um, as I said, work on yourself and you know learn how to ground, learn how to calm your nervous system, how to align yourself with your truth and take that with you to work. Um, and it can help you to cope with uh, the things that come up, you know, during the day. And it's just really, it just gives you so many more tools. It's, it's, it's almost hard to express how profoundly changed um, one can be when you are able to sit and really consider yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually that's transformational, you know, transformational learning, transformational experiences. Um, it's, it's a different perspective. So what, what does my practice look like? So I work in a clinic that has therapeutic yoga, counseling, and registered massage therapists, and myself. Um, my business is called Synapse Integral Health and I established it in 2015. I do advanced integrative energy healing with my clients. I also do integral coaching and I su support them in developing individualized self-care practices that are based on body, mind, and spirit focuses. And it's co-creative and client driven. So each, each um, care plan that we come up with is, is individualized and based on the resources that each client has internally and externally. Um, any of the plans that we create are measurable and attainable and can be changed so that we're not setting people up for failure and there are things that they can actually cope with because uh, a lot of the clients that come to see me are, I tend to get a lot of people in grief, a lot of people who've had a uh, recent uh, death in the family. Um, I get people who are very stressed out from work, uh, a lot of stress management issues, anxiety, um, chronic illnesses. Um, COVID was obviously uh, quite, um, it, you know, I don't even need to explain that to anybody, but, you know, people were very scared. People were ungrounded. People lost their jobs. Um, we had to pivot in the way that we were able to see people. So, uh, yeah, that is something that brought a whole new, a whole new ball game to my practice. But um, the interesting thing about all of this is that it doesn't seem to change. I get the people with the grief. I work with them um, over a period of time, and I incorporate the nursing process. So assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Um, because I am regulated, I also have to make sure that I maintain my confidentiality protocols. I do my charting um, correctly and legally. And yeah, so that's how I'm actually considered to be within my scope of practice as a registered nurse in British Columbia.
So I'm wondering if anybody has any questions at all about what it is that I do in my practice as a holistic nurse. Okay, so I'll continue on. So how do you become a holistic nurse? You really do have to start with your own journey, your own journey of transformational learning. Um, you have to start to understand what holistic means, um, really turn into yourself and discover you know, what is important to you spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, take a look at all of those aspects of self. Um, you try to embrace the body, mind, spirit aspects of yourself and others. Reach out to like-minded nurses, associations, and mentors, because there are a lot of nurses out there who have done this, and they are practicing, and they have come from a background that's probably very similar to a lot of yours, you know, working in the allopathic system. Um, and sometimes just listening to them and being mentored by them can help you go down the right path. And educate yourself. So currently, nursing schools in general don't integrate holistic concepts into the curriculum, per se. Um, I think essentially nurses are all holistically, um, holistically bent, but we don't have necessarily holistic training in our regular um, in our regular education. So holistic nursing is theory based and I'd just like to share my PowerPoint. this one So here are some examples. And I've, I've put down here, also known as I wish I knew then what I know now, because honestly, if I had had the tools that I have now, I may have been able to manage my work in, in a different way and maybe not have burnt out so easily, or maybe realize that the allopathic system wasn't for me and I needed to get out sooner and try something different. So education. So just looking at UBC and UVic schools of nursing in BC, a general review of the curriculum um, didn't really show that there are holistic concepts embedded in their, in their training. So while they support a systems view of nursing practice, this contemporary perspective does not formally include subtle energy aspects of being or consciousness or um, trans transpersonal states of being. The CHNA goal, so the Canadian Hosting Nurses Goal for this year and for next year is to reach out to nursing schools and students to educate and support them in holistic theory and practice integration. So we've recognized that this is a gap and we're hoping to really support um, nurses at a grassroots level because what we learn will impact us for the rest of our careers. And we're hoping to be there for them, whether students and throughout their professional, professional careers. So the American Holistic Nurses Association, um, we are actually an international chapter of the AHNA as well. So we share resources and support each other. Um, they have done a lot of work in bringing theory and education um, to nurses in context to holistic nursing. And for an example, um, this year, the Institutional Excellence in Holistic Nursing Education Award winner was Pacific College of Health and Science. And this is a college that's based in New York and has had a holistic nursing program uh, um, established since 2009. So these um, training centers do exist, um, but you have to really look to find them. I think in the States, they're, they're definitely more prevalent. In, in Canada, we don't have a university or a college that offers a holistic nursing um, degree program. The other thing I'd like to mention about the AHNA is that they published the Journal of Holistic Nursing and it is a peer reviewed research journal. So it is full of articles that have uh, are research based and peer reviewed. And I used it actually 
quite a lot during my master's program. It's full of a lot of great stuff. So here's their website if you want to go up and take a look at what they offer or even become a member. If you're a nurse here in the States, I would highly recommend a membership with them. So more education. Um, one of our board members on the CHNA, Sherry Hole, is the founder of The Kind, the Canadian Institute for Integrative Nursing Education and Development. And they have an accredited holistic nurse and coaching certificate program. And it's accredited by the CNA and also by um, the American Nurses Credentialing Center. So you can take that program and, and build a business and a practice around that. It, it's uh, actually quite amazing. So this is something also that I would recommend people take a look at. And the Kinds website is down there as well. So theory. Um, when I say that holistic nursing is based, is grounded in theory, we have numerous theorists listed up on our website. If you were interested in taking a look at how nurses have looked beyond the physical, how they have recognized the impact of systems and the impact of subtle energy on our clients and ourselves. Um, Florence Nightingale was the, you know, the original holistic nurse, environmental theory, and you know, her impact lives on today, absolutely. Jean Watson, theory of human caring and caring science. Margaret Newman, health is expanding human consciousness. Um, I actually, uh, referenced her and integrated her um, theory into my master's thesis, and I'll talk about that as we move along here. Martha Rogers, The Science of Unitary Human Beings. And those are only four. There, there are many more. So CHNA, there's our, our web address there, and you can take a look at what we have listed. AHNA also has um, many resources around theory. So why integral or holistic nursing theory? Like, why do we even want to go there? Well, it supports nursing practice grounded in a body, mind, spirit focus. It acknowledges the interplay of all aspects of self in context, community, environment, and transpersonal needs. It may be presented in an analytical, organized, inclusive framework. You know, this is what we're used to. And provides more tools to better serve our clients when we consider them physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So we're healing the whole person, not just the hip in room 251. How often have we heard that, you know, when we're reduced to, to our diagnosis? Um, what, you know, we can heal the hip, but what about the rest of the person? So I wanted to give you an example of integral theory, Barbara Dossi. Um, it's adapted from Ken Wilber's integral theory. It's informed by, but not limited to, Nightingale, Erickson, Newman, and Rogers, and formally builds on holistic nursing practice, considering the, the client as a multidimensional system supported by other multidimensional systems, such as self, family, environment, culture, health, and social structures, and the subtle energy transpersonal systems. And this is what it looks like. And I would really encourage you to um, take a look at Barbara Doss's work. She has a website. You just Google her and she'll come up. Um, so you can see how she has integrated um, nursing, aspects of nursing theory into the quadrants, the four quadrants. And it's just, she breaks it down so that you can see how she's layered it and layered it and layered it. So this is an example of what we could use, um, we, what we could teach to nursing students. And I have these references here, but I'll, if anyone wants these, this resource list, I'd be happy to provide it later on. Okay. So it's been my experience as well um, that university programs such as CIHS really support holistic nursing practice. And, you know, the MAI, 
a deepen my understanding of consciousness and subtle energy based concepts in constant context to working with clients. Um, you know, learning, you know, having a deeper dive into consciousness theory, into subtle energy, um, even shamanism, opening my mind to integral um, approaches to health, you know, it's just it gives you so many more tools and so many ways that we can look at our clients and respect our clients and meet our clients where they are um, and consider, you know, what is important to them spiritually in their healing process. It might not be to recover from what it is they have physically. It might be, you know, reconciling relationships. It might be reconciling um, their beliefs, their values, um, and validating those. So it's really quite profound. But, you know, we have the question here, is integrating holistic nursing into current systems really, is it practical? You know, I talk about all these great tools that we can have and, and body, mind, spirit approaches, but do we even, when would you even integrate that or try to use it in a busy hospital job? How could you even consider that? There's no time. And plus we're exhausted. You know, it, I was fortunate that I was in a time off from work that I could start pursuing, you know, some holistic education, but we don't all have that. So it's, it's really about looking at the barriers and trying to um, mitigate the barriers. So I made a little list of what I feel are barriers to introducing and supporting holistic nursing practice. And it starts with, you know, institutional practice and the venue where you are working. You know, there's no time to complete basic tasks of contemporary nursing. Um, those types of modalities may not be accepted by institutional policy. When you're working in places like hospice and palliative care, I do find that the spiritual approaches are really accepted and are part of what we do. So, you know, we even teach our hospice volunteers therapeutic touch to work with our clients. So, you know, there is, there are ways that, that uh, holistic modalities can be integrated into current nursing practice, but it's not common. Um, employer support. So would you be supported by your employer if you came in and wanted to do energy healing on a surgical ward? Um, I can give an example of a, a nurse that I work with who is a therapeutic touch practitioner and our orthopedic surgeons would refer to her for pain control. And that was back in the early 90s. So there's hope. Typically, we refer out to other team members. So it's like a silo scope situation. So if we have a client who needs spiritual support, we'll refer them out to um, uh, the, the pastor or minister or spiritual um, support person in the hospital or social work. Um, psychological issues go to, to mental health. And we typically look after the physical part. So, and, you know, as long as the client is having their needs met, but it's still, you know, something, if we can hold that perspective ourselves as the primary um, caregivers, the nurses, you know, that's also helpful. Experiential, you know, CAM therapies are not well utilized or not experienced due to cost and accessibility. And I often wondered whether nurses experience of a holistic modality would be more um, would be more relevant than just research. If I were to give them a research paper to read that said holistic nursing practice works because of this, that, and the other thing, would they be more likely to engage in the modality or having an experience where they actually had a body, mind, spirit experience, like going to the yoga or or having energy healing? You know, what is it? What balance is it that's going to help them um, to really engage with holistic practices? Um, educational, formal versus informal, are in scope of practice or not? You know, would, would uh, a holistically trained nurse with a certification be more accepted than someone who just, you know, was a self-taught um, meditation teacher? You know, what do we have to look at as far as education goes for holistic nursing to have credibility, peer support or not? I know um, 
initially when I started doing this work, I had negative feedback from other nurses saying, well, this is not nursing. You can't, you can't call yourself a nurse. You're not regulated. Um, but I was regulated. And yes, I could call myself a nurse. But, you know, that argument is still there. And the support is not always there from our peers to go forward into body, mind, spirit modalities. That's why it's so important to connect with like-minded nurses. And, you know, just really um, try to shore up your support system. Uh, so your regulatory body, as I mentioned before, can I actually call myself a nurse? Now, I'm not, I'm not sure what it's like in the States, but I know in Canada, it seems to vary from province to province. We have to submit um, an application or a paper that explains why it is that what we do is nursing. And it's up to them to tell us whether or not it is. And as I said, fortunately, um, the, the integrative energy healing that I do, um, the program was created by a nurse and was presented to our regulatory body and they did accept it as within our scope. So this is, this is the quandary though, when we have people that reach out to us at the CHNA who are really enthusiastic about what it is that they're doing, but they can't practice as a nurse. They can't call themselves a nurse. And we're working on trying to um, streamline that, those regulations. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll see that, you know, they'll be more accepted as being within their scope of practice. And personal belief systems and worldview, you know, so if we're very um, hesitant and cautious about, you know, going away from what we've been taught and what we know as far as practice and nursing practice, you know, it can take a while for us to really accept um, alternative modalities. And we know that, you know, people are afraid of nurses that, you know, like, how can you call yourself a nurse if you're doing all this woo-woo stuff? I didn't, I wasn't going to use that term today, <laughs> but we heard it. I still hear it, you know? So what we do as uh, holistic nurses, people will call it whatever they're going to call it, but we need to, um, be solid in ourselves and, and um, really give ourselves our own credibility for practicing body, mind, spirit um, modalities with our clients that we know have positive results or, you know, or not. Sometimes they don't. Like, I don't want to make it sound like for sure holistic nursing is the only way to go because I'm still, you know, pretty left brained analytical person. And I have to really see the outcomes, adjust the treatment you know, what works for one person might not work for another person. So I don't take everything at face value. Um, but generally speaking, my experience with holistic practices has been very positive. Um, another thing is funding. So RNs in independent practice who are doing holistic practices, they're not covered by any extended health or, or um, provincial medical system. So accessibility can be an issue because clients can't often afford what they're charging and nurses don't often like to charge because it's uncomfortable for them we had this discussion last night you know we're used to getting a paycheck we're not used to to billing we're not used to saying yes this is my worth so i'm thinking that that's starting to change with the conversations we've been having and business startup is expensive so that is also a barrier and I have here highlighted research-based practice is so, so important. So research, research, research. So I think we just need to, you know, continue talking about this and connecting with people who are um, like-minded and networking and mentoring each other um, and continue our research, you know, to really inform our practice and shore up our credibility. And I just want to quote the kind, um, using a whole care approach that integrates complementary therapies is empowering for both nurses and client, clients and reinforces the innate healing abilities that lie within us all. So I just, I truly believe in that. So reflecting on our healing journey, um, my MAIH, was focused on self-care for nurses. 
nurses can be considered wounded healers in the true sense of the term. Compassion fatigue and burnout, vicarious trauma, our own trauma, we've experienced that. And especially over the past few years with COVID, the grief involved, um, absolute stress. It's, it's un, you know, I can't even say it's difficult. We know what it is. Um, in Canada, one of our standards of practice is to maintain our health and fitness to practice. And we can't fully support our clients when we also need support. So through my healing journey, I saw and experienced the value of holistic and integral self-care concepts for nurses' well-being. And therefore, my thesis for my master's was focused on holistic self-care uh, in a holistic self-care program for nurses called the Conscious Nurse Project. So I'm just going to share the screen again. I didn't want to do a whole bunch of PowerPoints, but sometimes you really do need to share this. All right, sorry. So the Conscious Nurse Project an online holistic self-care workshop for nurses. And at the time that I did this, COVID was was just ramping up. And I saw the need for um, self-care support for nurses. And even, even now though, I have sometimes a hard time with the words self-care uh, because when you're exhausted and burnt out, you can't, it's really hard to care for yourself. You really, you know, nurses need to be held. They need to be supported. And, you know, any type of help that they can receive to restore themselves, um, you know, is, is just so important. So the Conscious Nurse Program began as a research proposal for my MAIH thesis. The research proposal was developed specifically as an evaluation of an online holistic self-care workshop. And it wasn't intended to include other nursing professionals. And quite honestly, it is very appropriate um, and applicable to other health profession professionals, first responders, um, you know, anybody who works as a caregiver. The, in, the intervention aspect of the research proposal evolved into an online holistic self-care workshop. Um, however, I do provide this in person. I prefer in person, um, but either way, I wanted it to be flexible for people. And I know that nurses' schedules are all over the place. So this gives them flexibility. So the issue is that RNs standards of practice, at least here in Canada, require them to maintain their health and fitness to practice. And you can see all of the things that we experience over here in this little fellow with all the, the emotions attached to, to the body here and stress, anxiety. And I added grief because grief was a big thing for people working in the hospitals over COVID and, and anywhere really. Trauma and exposure to vicarious trauma, the impact on physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health and this all can lead to reduced functioning and burnout. So I wanted to see how we could support nurses' capacity to maintain, maintain their health and fitness to practice. So the scope and prevalence, the stress and burnout. So exposure to stressors occurs in acute and non-acute practice. Um, we had some really excellent studies done um, recently, 2020, uh, 20, 2017 around uh, nurses in different areas of practice and how they were coping and how they they saw their their practice as impacting their their mental health. So they reported worsening mental health and lower quality of nursing care. Nurses suffer from emotional and moral distress, leading to outcomes that include emotional exhaustion, burnout, jobs, dissatisfaction, and eventual exit from the profession. And I don't I don't this is not good. We don't want all our nurses to have to leave, you know, the, their vocation and their calling, you know, we need to support them. So nurses experience is physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And we all nurses already know about intuition and vibes and the full moon effect, you know, subtle energy, they may not know to call it that, um, toxic work environments. How does that impact us being in a room full of stressed out nurses and, you know, stressed out, stressed out managers and spirit and the spiritual aspects of, of care and prayer, you know, we're, we're already immersed in all of this, but how do we, you know, 
how do we identify it, define it, and apply it to self-care for us? So RNs are bound by their standards of practice and code of ethics to support their own health and maintain fitness to practice. And our code of ethics endorses the WHO's definition of health, a state of complete physical, mental, spiritual, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease. So this acknowledges the interactive relationship between all dimensions of the human experience as holistic. Holistic self-care, therefore, is a valid resource to support the health of nurses. And I just found it so amazing as I really delved into this and delved into the research and, and spoke with nurses, how this, you know, was really truly reflected theoretically, you know, the importance and the, the relevance of holism. Here we go. So the holistic approach to self-care is a means for supporting fitness to practice, enhances capacity for compassionate care of patients and their families. And these are just some more quotes, you know, that I found in my lit search. Um, nurses possess varying levels of resilience and may find satisfaction in providing care in challenging situations. So, you know, we're not, we are strong people. We are strong professionals and we come in with, with great skills, um, and enthusiasm for what we do. And so even having said that, if you aren't burnt out, you know, holistic self-care practices may strengthen and sustain that resilience from a whole person perspective. So it's like a maintenance, you know. Um, while provision of holistic care is a hallmark of competent nursing practice, holistic activities centered on self are less prevalent for nurses. So why is that? You know, care for the caregiver. Why are we so, um, it's so easy for us to give, but it's harder for us to receive. And I think that that's been, you know, a classic situation forever really for any type of a caregiver so holistic experience of stress so i've just listed here physical mental emotional and spiritual a couple of the things that really stand out to me is under spiritual um, moral distress when we can't reach our nursing standards and provide the care that we you know really are bound to provide that causes a lot of moral distress and that can lead to burnout because it stresses you out it gives you anxiety it makes you feel guilty um, and this is not just my experience it is also anecdotal from colleagues and other nurses that I've spoken to so the research question was how to recreate how to create a workshop that will successfully engage in RNs engage RNs in effective and sustainable sustainable holistic self-care and that picture on the side there was what my floor looked like when I was working on my thesis, because there really was a lot of um, information on holistic practices, holistic self-care practices, and the beginnings of um, research documents on the impact of that on nurses. So it was, this is still sort of a evolving um, focus of research and a lot of, um, not a lot of information out there, but I was able to review topics such as methods for engaging RNs in, in holistic self-care, methods of effective holistic self-care, methods of teaching, and methods for supporting sustainable holistic self-care, all in context of practice of nurses. So methods for engaging, um, we have to consider worldview transformation, self-knowledge and self-compassion. We have to uh, consider the operational factors like time for training, practice, and accessibility. We have to consider organizational factors and research specific to the philosophical aspects of engagement in holistic self-care by nurses is lacking. So we need more research on this in order for us to really um, develop um, supports for nurses. So perceptions and peer support, we've talked about that already. Permission from self. Methods of effective holistic self-care. So the lit search showed me that yoga and breath work for nervous system self-regulation, meditation and mindfulness-based stress reduction were the most cited holistic self-care methods. Individualization is important. Um, we're not cookie cutters. Uh, studies specific to whether theoretical knowledge of holistic self-care was important were not found. I couldn't find anything that um, previous knowledge that said previous knowledge was important factor in nurses engaging 
uh, a lack of follow-up data regarding the sustained use of these modalities was noted as well. Methods for teaching, what were the most effective ones? So interventional studies described on-site and online platforms. There was a lack of literature for the online platforms. All of the online interventional studies were participant guided with um, limited support or contact from the instructors, at least face-to-face. -face. Impact of instructor expertise uh, was not specifically um, described. Uh, and again, there was a, a lack of um, data around the impact of instructor facilitated versus self-directed learning. And common themes identified were accessible to, accessibility to content, learning tools and resource, resources, venue, and length of instruction program time. But sensitivity to the learning needs of the individual um, was noted as being important. For, okay, so methods for sustaining holistic self-care. So a lot of it was around permission from self, connection to self, embodiment of practice, individualized self-care plans based on self-assessment. So there's a lot of self going on here. And so, you know, it occurred to me that individualization of any holistic self-care plan is really important and reinforcement of practices in short increments over extended period of time was recommended. So mentorship is really important in that as well. So the Conscious Nurse Project then came together after my literature search developed as an inter intervention of my research proposal created by integrating evidence from the lit review and foundational holistic and consciousness theories and feedback from clients and colleagues. Nurses taught holistic self-assessment. Nurses are taught holistic self-assessment, how to plan, how to implement and evaluate their own individualized holistic self-care plans. And this is a mentored program. So I, the instructor is always there for feedback and support. Hopes to capture what RNs conceptualize as effective means for learning and engaging in and sustaining their, their self-care practices. So over a period of time, I'm hoping that the feedback through the evaluation of the program experience is going to give us more information on what is actually going to be effective in supporting and sustaining holistic self-care in context to nurses. So the theoretical framework, the workshop integrates Margaret Newman's theory of health as expanding consciousness, Sri Aurobindo's integral yoga, uh, nervous system self-regulation, and biofield science, the impact of subtle energy, consciousness plus energy, systems impacting systems, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So, you know, there we have some elements of, of connecting the self, um, the impact of physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual consciousness, um, nervous system self-regulation, because we all know that our nervous systems are fried when we're working a lot of times. Um, so we're not going to learn anything if we're not in our bodies, able to focus, and full of in anxiety. And the biofield science, I, I was really drawn to this in the sense of the impact of thought forms, the impact of other energies around us, and how they can stick to our fields and stick to our bodies. And literally, when people say you can't take your work home with you, well, sometimes you have no choice because those vibrations and those energies are, are stuck to you and you can feel it. You know what it feels like when you go into a room full of um, working nurses and working individuals, sick people, people in crisis. So, you know, how does subtle energy um, really play into this? So the assessment tool that I developed is um, inspired by Sri Aurobindo's theory of consciousness and integral yoga. It's adapted from the concentric map of consciousness uh, that was created by Dr. Ruth Lamb. And I've got her reference down there. So what I, I ask people to do to the best of their ability, um, along with other support practices that go along with this, but the, the assessment part is to just reflect, reflect on a daily basis. Who's driving the bus? Are you physically sore? Are you emotionally um, challenge? Uh, can you calm your mind? You know, are you feeling disconnected from self and your values and your, 
you know, can you meet your standards? And I just ask people to just reflect and, and it's going to be from their perspective. And it's very interesting as, as it goes along through the month, how you can see which ones are really being impacted the most. And it might not be what they expect at the end of the day. So when one is out of balance, the other three will be out of balance and it will all impact self. And one might be, you know, rajasic or, or really aggressive and the others might also be trying to be that. And wouldn't that be a state of chaos for yourself? So this is just an assess assessment tool and they can run it through the whole program and they can go back to it any time and just see how things are going. Things might have changed with their self-care practice once they've implemented them, you know. So it's really sort of uh, an interesting map. So the workshop itself is one hour guided sessions weekly. Um, I have a five week program and I now have a three week program. And honestly, I've changed my whole format so that it's really not gonna be Tuesday at seven o'clock for five weeks that we do this. It's whenever within a five week period. Um, and if it, they need a little bit longer to get through it, that's completely fine because I, I found the flexibility is just so important. Um, fully online, all the resources are available online and it's also in person. Um, it can be either or, or both. Uh, it's recorded for flexible access because I can see groups. Um, if you can't make it because you're working, then you, you get the recording. Um, I am the instructor right now and it's mentored with two sessions post the end of the workshop, just for touch base and make sure everything's going okay. Resources for deeper learning are provided and it's experiential and self-reflected. And the program objectives are, this is really an introductory program. I didn't wanna scare anybody away. Um, I wanted to make it very simple and person-based, you know, words that are understandable in context to, you know, where they're coming from. So I provide basic holistic, holistic self-care concepts. We can go deeper if they want to. Um, teach, I teach them how to use the self-assessment tool and we develop self-care practices and introduce self-care practices that fit for them, that are attainable, measurable, and changeable because you want to set people up for success. You don't want to fail at, you know, I didn't do my breath work. Oh my gosh, you know, I can't fit it in. Here comes more stress. You know how that goes. So, um, so by the end of the course, people will be able to demonstrate the foundational knowledge of holistic self-care. They'll be able to utilize holistically based self-assessment tool, identify holistic aspects of self, internal and external resources, that they can integrate into their plans, implement and embody their self-care plans and practices and evaluate the effectiveness of their self-care plan. And I also ensure that they know how to ground, how to calm their nervous system and how to be aware of their energetic boundaries, even at a simple level, at a beginning level. And that is actually the core of what I teach all of my clients. Grounding, centering, aligning. So grounding, breath, nervous system self-regulation, mindfulness, and meditation. And I do a lot of ref, uh, referencing and, and referring out because I do, I'm very um, blessed to be connected with a lot of, uh, with people who are experts in their field in holistic practice, mindfulness, meditation. And, you know, what works for one person might not work for another. So I'm very aware of that. and variations of sacred space. Sacred space might even be in your car driving home from work because you're alone in your car. You can crank your music or you can turn off your music. You know, that's just one example. So I do try to encourage people to create a place of healing or at least a place of transition between chaos and, and quiet. 
So in conclusion, the Conscious Nurse Project assumes that nurses' work will continue to be challenging physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It also specifically assumes that due to the ongoing impact of COVID-19, RNs will require self-care to maintain their health and fitness to practice. And even as you know, COVID settles down a little bit, there are still those challenges. We know all about those. Every effort should be made to support nursing professionals to care for themselves and to honor the invaluable work that they do. And again, here's a reference list that I can share if anybody would like that afterwards. So basically then in closing, I would just like to thank you all for being here today and listening to me talk about holistic nursing and holistic self-care. Um, I could go on forever, <laughs> but I would highly recommend that you connect with the AHNA, the American Holistic Nurses Association and the CHNA. Canadian Holistic Nurses Association for resources if you're curious about holistic nursing practice theory and community. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. That was really inspiring and educational and um, informative, especially for our nursing community. And um, I hope you can come back and share more with us um, about your conscious nursing project and about you know all the great work that you continue to do oh, that'd be great thank you so much yeah Nicole. yes does anybody have any questions for kate before we wrap things up if you do you're welcome to unmute yourself or pop a question in the q a or chat box uh, well, and if, as you're thinking of your questions, or if you don't have any, I just wanted to remind you that um, programs like this are made possible by your donations. Uh, we have a really easy way for you to uh, donate by texting 801-801 to, uh, or texting CIHS to 801-801. We always appreciate your donations to keep our public programming alive and uh, vibrant and running. Oh yeah, and Kate just put her, um, email in the chat box uh, so you can feel free to email her with any questions that you may think of as you digest this great uh, session. Oh, we do have a question here. Nancy's asking, how do you market your services? Um, that's a great question. So what I do is, because I work in a multidisciplinary clinic, word of mouth is great. Um, also, being a member of the CHMA, we have a member's directory where we can uh, post our practices up there for people to connect with us. Um, I talk to um, other healthcare professionals that I know in the community. And, you know, I have cards, I have business cards. I found that uh, hard, hard copy, hard paper um, advertising wasn't effective at all. Um, I had little response to putting things out in a local paper. And I also use, um, I use Facebook. I have both of them, like the Synapse Integral Health and the Consciousness Project have a Facebook page. And I have websites, which seem to get a lot of traction, which is, I think which is good. Also, you're on LinkedIn too, right? Yes, See? LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah, that's been a good one, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. We we have a group. I should mention this called um, the Canadian Association. Oh, help me for nurse. Oh, case RNs. I can never. I think these acronyms kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's an association that supports nurses in independent practice, and they are fantastic. I don't know if there's anybody in, like that in the states, but um, they support. Uh, nurses in marketing, in developing and starting their own independent practices. And uh, we had actually a panel presentation last night that had some really good information on that. So I would encourage you to reach out to Case RNs if you're in Canada. And if not, you know, reach out to AHNA or even the American Nurses Association should have something around nurses in independent practice. Yeah. 
We have gotten a lot of um, interest in um, holistic nursing through CIHS. And so we are uh, hoping to, yeah, we are hoping to add more holistic programs um, with you, Kate, and then also with the kind that, that um, Kate mentioned. So some of that is in the works as well on our end. Yes. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Much needed. Mm hmm. All right. Well, thank you again, Kate. And thank you for everybody that's watching this live. And if you're um, watching it recording, you can always uh, email um, myself at CIHS or Kate at um, nursing at shaw.ca. And um, again, we look forward to seeing more of you, Kate, and learning more about what you're doing in this um, big, exciting, developing realm of holistic nursing. It right? is exciting. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thanks again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody.